Welcome to the Mindful Muscle Podcast. My name is Paul Klingen, and I am your host. I left a career at Amazon in 2018 to help people live healthier lives. Mindful Muscle is the balance between pushing harder to hit your fitness goals while also being able to slow down. We'll talk all things training, nutrition, and recovery while also highlighting the importance of mindfulness, slowing down, and taking care of mental health and performance. You'll hear from doctors, authors, athletes, coaches, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders in the health and wellness space. And you'll hear from me as an athlete, trainer, nutrition, and personal performance coach as I share my thoughts and experiences that are helping my clients and myself get better each and every day. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Mindful Muscle Podcast. We got my man Karan uh, on for part two. And sure. it's part two, but it's it's a whole new Karan. And not that like, you've changed, but the flowability stuff that you've been teaching and been a part of and stuff that you taught me, and I'll dive into how you helped me real, real quickly, but it's been so cool to see you grow and see this, you're like, it's not an emerging technology because it's the body, but it's this <laughs> whole new of concept and approach to spine health. And so real quick, man, just like, what is flowability? We'll jump right into it. Cause obviously people know your story. We've had you on the podcast before, but I think this will be something really helpful for people that deal with any kind of spinal pain, neck, mid back, low back, and then I'm guessing other areas of the body because it's all connected and that's really your core and your center. Right, right, right. So um, thanks for having me on again, man. So pleasure to be here. Um, so I think to keep things simple, can you hear me okay? Is my mic good? Yeah, mic's good. All right, cool. Um, I think the, the way to describe it is keeping things very simple. I compare um, flowability to a symphony. So think about like in a symphony or an orchestra, you have different instruments, you know, that are playing at different keys at different tempos coming in and out at different times, different levels, different sounds. Um, and when they all come together and harmonize and synchronize, it's, it's beautiful. It's music, it's art. It's something that is, you know, pleasing to the eye, but also to the ears. Like it's, there's multiple um, sensory uh multiple sensory like pleasure that we get from listening to really, really good music that's like together and cohesive. And that's very comparable to your body and the internal systems that it houses. So when the body is in homeostasis, which is, you know, alignment, posture, you know, things that we talk about, um, it's making beautiful music. Movement is art and it's meant to be graceful and, and, and you know, pleasing to the eye. Um, and what happens is when things start to essentially veer off, it all starts from child development. Child development is sort of the foundation of how we learn to move. As babies, you know, we spend a whole first year just learning how to move, um, developing literally postural muscles that help stabilize certain areas so other areas can be mobile. Um, and if that air, if that process is rushed, if that child development is rushed, if they're taken out of tummy time too, too many times or too early, their, you know, clothes are put on them, they're forced to walk early, they're, you know, they're doing this and that, that natural process in which we create homeostasis from a biomechanics standpoint is sort of lost. And there's multiple components that are never synchronized together. Um, so that's when you can say like the clarinets start playing off key the saxophones are too loud the piano is like completely off like the, the the you know every instrument is just doing their own thing and the conductor who you could think of as the brain is trying it's like yo like come on like you gotta you gotta follow me like i'm i'm saying all these things and for some reason they're either not getting the message or they're listening to a previous message and it's on repeat so that's very comparable to what's happening with the body um, with compression, the, the telephone between the brain and the body via the spinal cord is is cut in some way. Can I tell you like, oh yeah, it's like a, you know, 15 degree angle of compression and that's creating this, I have no idea. However, there is literally smashing happening at the vertebrae. In the vertebral column, there is compression, which is impeding communication between the brain and the body. And now these nerves don't just innervate muscles, they innervate organs and 
you know, um, glands and all different types of processes in our body are innovated and communicated through the central nervous system. Millions of transactions all day. Just us looking in like a second, we see a million different things that just, and the brain is just processing millions of, of, of stimulus all day, constantly. And what's cool about that is that even though there's all these issues, all this dysfunction, this, this, this desynchronization and, you know, instability and efficiency, you know, we're, we're, we're still living, we're still on our phones, on our Instagram, we're still enjoying our presence of our loved ones and our family. So it's not like it's a life or death thing. There's just such a higher level of, of being. There's a higher level of music that can be made when everything is sort of put together. So um, flowability harmonizes biomechanics. It harmonizes the internal structures of the body. So the external is visually um, different because that's really what posture is. It's your brain's way of, of protecting you. It's, it's, it's the only way the brain knows how to move on, which is survival and adaptation. And that visual adaptation is your brain adjusting to the imbalances that are internal via the external image that is posture. Yeah. Posture is a really interesting one because a lot of people would think of posture as like how you sit at your desk, right? And I've seen you talk and the, the brain is always trying to solve this equation of posture. Posture is dynamic. Posture is ever moving. Talk a little bit about that and just how everyone thinks that, you know, if I do this exercise or do this, this stretch that's going to change my posture when it's really governed like you said from the central nervous system yeah sure so um when we think of posture as you said you know we kind of think like oh yeah that's good posture put my shoulders back yeah um so you could think of the traditional um model of posture as being a verb as something we can do like i can posture myself to you know appear this or that I can raise my chest and now I'm, I'm extending, you know what I mean? But there is a sort of internal programming, you could call it, that determines which muscles are going to move and which ones are going to hold when you decide to move a joint. Because your bones, they don't actually move. They're being moved by your musculature. And your musculature is being managed by your central nervous system unconsciously. So like, yes, I'm doing this and I'm doing this and I'm doing this, but there's certain internal things that are either open or closed where I can access it or I can't, right? So like when we're talking about posture, we're talking about the sort of unconscious programming of how your body is moving or still or anything in space via the musculature, via the brain. All that stuff is happening way before you even think about it. So we don't really have a choice in that regard. Yes, I can move my leg. I can lift my leg up. But what's really managing that motion? For a lot of us, if we stood on one leg and lifted our leg up, we do this. Or we do this. That is something that for most of us, we cannot control because of a lack of capacity in other musculature that's supposed to hold. Namely, we're going to talk about pelvis and rib cage. That stability of the core in the middle is supposed to hold. And then your lateral hips, your hips are supposed to, they're supposed to pop. One's supposed to stabilize, one's supposed to mobilize. They're supposed to work together. That's that, that's that symphony thing I was talking about. Your body is an interdependent system. It, it's not like working on one thing will change everything. Because um, even working on the ribcage and pelvis is very complex. It's not just like if I just exhale, phew, all right, I'm done, I got it. Like it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a learned behavior that takes time to repatternize. That's another thing about our body. We're all about patterns. You know, everything is a pattern, um, whether it be in, you know, fat loss, nutrition, lifting, training, posture, sleep, whatever. It's all patterns. I would even say therapy like that. That's what any kind of mental performance therapist, it's all neural pathways that 100%. are either, and I, I like to use the analogy or metaphor of, of freeways and dirt paths where it's like, <laughs> yeah. it may not be the best way to get from point A to point B, but it's the freeway you've taken since to your point in child development, or since you were five or 25 when you got injured. Right. And so it's like, how do you turn that dirt path, which is the path you should go on to be the one that you default to in the most stressful situations. Yeah. And if you don't have that pathway grooved, whether it's lifting your hip or getting into an argument with someone, 
you're just going to go back to that default pattern. Yep. Yep. And that's something we don't have control over. Like people ask me all the time um, about like, oh, should I try to, you know, blow my ribs in when I walk? Or should I try to hold my glutes when I stand or things like that? And I'm like, absolutely not. Like, no, no. Um, Try to posture when you, when you sprint, it's impossible. You can't, if you're really going all out on the sprint, it's impossible to, to posture the way that the verbs are saying. Um, even when you walk, walking is a, is a complex patterning. There's a lot of things going on when we just walk. And I don't, I don't like to make it too, sound too complex, but my, my point is that we don't have control the way we think we do. <laughs> you know, Just because I think I'm extending from somewhere doesn't mean I am. Most of us extend right at the middle of our low back. So the unlucky ones are lower. So that's, that's kind of what it is. Are the unlucky ones the people that develop some sort of hernias, pinched nerves, essentially? Like, I think that's a really interesting conversation. And I know that this is something that you can help with, but people have some sort of low back pain. And then they're just like, what, what low back stretches can I do? Like, what, what can I do? Or, or they go the route of like, I'll never do anything again. Yeah. What has been your experience in seeing that and helping people through that? Yeah. So I think, um, I don't know the source of people's extension points because it is de- dependent on their, how they were raised, how they lived, how they sat, you know, it's a lot of things. It's like, not just one thing, you know what I mean? It's like a, it's a culmination of many different patterns over time that contribute to how they're going to move subconsciously or subconsciously and unconsciously. Um, so subconscious, you can think of like how they breathe. That's a subconscious patterning. I'm talking to you, not thinking about breathing, but if I wanted to, I can think about it and I can do it. Unconscious is like, that's the stuff that we can't touch. It has to be influenced over time by other things, like other inputs. Um, obviously conscious is, you know, consciousness, which is, crazy conversation that we won't get into. But um, going back to, you know, what you were saying about helping people through these things. The hardest part is for some people, understanding that there's more to life than just like, being afraid to move and doing things, you know. Um, Because, you know, you you take someone who's um, 31. And tell them, oh, yeah, you're not going to be able to do this again. Oh, you're not gonna be able to play ball again, you're not gonna be able to skateboard again. You know, I you probably shouldn't do that anymore. You probably shouldn't lift anymore. I, you, you probably shouldn't do this. And you just create this like giant list of like, hey, you're probably going to hurt your back if you do this list and just give that to them with no solution. With like, oh, yeah, you can probably do some stem cell. You can probably do some some icing or, you know, maybe some massage work. Um, yeah, good luck. Like, what, what kind of life is that? And that's, that's not a life anyone is meant to live. We're not meant to live like that. We're not meant to be these like docile and just, you know, immobile creatures. We're meant to be just moving all over the place and exploring and running, jumping, you know, all of our basic functionalities that define our existence. Um, movement is health. It's everything. So when you tell someone that, hey, doing these movements, which are things we do every single day, we deadlift every day, we hinge every day, go tie your shoe, go pick up a book bag, go reach for the can of beans, we're doing all these motions every day. But when you define a specific context, with the label of like, hey, I know what's good for you. And you say, don't do this. It's like, well, they're they're telling me like, they're, they're the pro, like, am I not supposed to do this? And over time, you know, as we go through the practice, they start to understand that like, okay, okay, so I just need to focus on this, get this to move better, work better. And then over time, they start to slowly regain some of these things that they thought were lost forever, which is the most beautiful experience ever. Um, Because for a lot of people, they really think that's it. Like, oh, yeah, I I can't do that. My knees, oh, my back's gonna hurt. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I'd, I'd love to go play. But like, you know, last time I did, like, I really hurt my knee. And I gotta watch out for that. Got this brace somewhere, you know, I'm going to PT. And they're like 33. You know what I mean? You see it in athletics as well. When, when's, when's the prime over? 35. Yeah. yeah. Even like younger. That, 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 that's like, that's like the, the top, the lucky ones like Brady are like playing in their forties. You know what I'm saying? But like most, most athletes, they're done, done at like 30. 
that, that that's crazy. It's crazy. Um, now, obviously, with certain contact sports, it's a little different because you're, you're literally getting hit in the head for a living. But um, for some of these things, it's like it's not what we think it is at all. Um, so the biggest thing is just helping them believe. That's the first thing. Getting them to be aware, helping them believe and just like guiding them through the process and then creating self-sufficiency. That's a big part of um, what I do as a coach. I do my best to help my client understand that, hey, there's going to be a point where you're not going to need me. I don't want you to rely on me forever. That's why I teach as I teach pretty much. I mean, I, I, that's, that's the same thing that, that we do um, when we're helping clients with fat loss and nutrition. It's all about education. Yeah. Not just like, hey, do this. Why? Oh, just do it. Like you teach them you, you, so that they can learn and actually instill these habits in their life. And it's the same thing for what we're doing. We teach them so they can learn how to do this for themselves eventually. Curious for myself and for friends that'll listen to this that just had newborns, but like, what are the, the you, you mentioned putting on clothes too early or tummy time, and like all these things that like you don't even think about. Like I'm, I'm now thinking about because my friends are having kids and I'm like, oh man, like I got to start thinking about this now. Like, what are some of the things either as a baby or as a young kid? Obviously we have terrible things that we do now from a posture standpoint, but what are the, the things that are like big movers in either developing really well or inhibiting that development. Cause I've seen the stuff you post flowability posts where it is all like the baby's got the, 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 the matrix down yeah. and then we unwind it yeah. as we go and sit them in their desk for first grade. No doubt. No doubt, man. I mean, it's a, it's a systemic issue. You know, it's not just like one thing. Um, and it's not my place. It's not my place to be like, you shouldn't do this to your kids. Like, who am I? You know, I'm only speaking from an analytical standpoint. Like I'm, I by no means I'm trying to tell someone how to raise their children. That is not my area of expertise at all. Um, the main recommendations and, and this, and this comes from me like studying like labs where they've had two kids kind of next to each other raise at the same time where parents will bring them in, they'll, they'll do checkups. We're like, okay, how are these basic movements developing? Like, can the baby stabilize their neck as we pull them up? Or is the baby doing that? Can, can, can the baby hold themselves in a crawling position? Or is it, it, you know what I'm saying? Like they're looking for these developmental positions, these fundamental positions. And they're seeing if the musculature is developing properly. I'm coming at it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. And then flowability is literally coming from, um, from pillar principles, you know, what they've done is they've, they've reformatted child development for adults. That's literally it. We, we've cool. all, we've done this before this, this position power cat where I'm like this and, you know, sitting on my sit bones, like, you know, this position of my my, my ears and my shoulders or people say, oh, why are your shoulders rounded? Go, go tell a baby to stop rounding their shoulders. Go tell a baby to pull their shoulders back when they're crawling on the floor. They can't. They can't. It's impossible. And I mean, it's impossible from the standpoint as, as they'll never develop like that if they're kind of left to their devices because babies are, they're problem solving. And sometimes, you know, it, it's difficult. They fall a lot. They're, they're crying. They're, you know, they're, they're trying to figure it out for, for a freaking year, you know, and their baby and, and their, their brains are like, they're just clay. They're learning. So sometimes um, some of these habits are picked up from what they see. They're mimicking, you know, they're, they're, they're copying. So it's not all just like, oh yeah, like, you know, we put them in the stroller too early or something like that. Sometimes it's like they saw something and now they're copying and trying to do it. So mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's a large, large combination of things. It's like, like I said, it's a systemic thing that is also in education. You know, we're forced to sit all day. Then it goes to corporate where we're forced to sit all day when we're learning in a, we're forced to sit all. It's, it's understanding that we are putting ourselves in these positions that um, aren't bad. We're just not using the right musculature to manage it and changing that management system takes hard work. That's why when you see me sit on my sit bones and I'm blowing my face off, sweating like crazy, because I'm trying to change what's holding me in that position. 
when I'm on the ground doing the power cat or reaching or any of that stuff. I'm trying to literally in the moment say, hey, brain, don't use these anymore. Get out of there and use my serratus. Hey, brain, don't use the low back, excuse me, anymore, whether it be in like this or like this. So like you could think the low back's coming really far forward or the low back smashing backwards. Hey, don't use that that anymore. Freeze that thing. And now use this intrinsic core mus musculature. It's hard, especially when you add load to it, meaning picking your feet up or a weight, anything like that, it becomes even tougher. So um, I know I, I strayed really far from your question, but yeah, no, super helpful. And for anyone that's, that's listening to this, when he was doing a symbol with his hand, I call it video game, butt and twerk, butt, where it's basically <laughs> like how you sit when you're playing video games where like your pelvis is really tucked underneath. Right. And that's that, that position of pushing your low back into the floor that you guys might've heard when you're, you know, in a, in a fitness class. And then the other version is, you know, the torque butt where it's like, you're sticking it out, arching your back, trying to do like the, the Kim Kardashian um, on the cover of paper. And I think that is, is a good segue into like, what are these, these pillar principles and this rib cage pelvic alignment? And like, where do you start when you're going to really try and change someone at, at the, the core level, like you're talking about? Yeah. So, um, for inflowability, like what, what, what we do is we first teach you how to align your rib cage and pelvis and then be aware of when like, it's, it's like starting to veer. Um, so our programming is very specific in that way where it all stems back to getting that alignment. Um, and then we have to challenge the posterior legs. So we're trying to open up the hamstrings be it getting the hips and the core to work better because the hamstrings are holding on because there's no support. There's no supportive musculature around the pelvis at the ankles, you know, at the actual hip, there's, there's no support. There's no help. And that creates a desynchronization as I was telling you before the symphony between the front and back of the leg, where ideally when we bend over the back of the leg should do this, the front of the leg should do this. It gets, should get smaller. So one should get longer, one should get smaller. Like there should always be a stretch and a shortened cycle where when you move, one thing should lengthen, one thing should shorten. Well, not one thing, but you get what I'm saying. Um, but because of that lack of support, the wrong things are holding and the wrong things are moving. So what we're, we're helping to change is we're trying to help the hips and the core uh, manage most of the movements where right now it's the low back and the hip flexors because first of this instability between the rib cage and the pelvis now why is that so important why 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 if there's instability meaning when there's pressure applied to a system it's shaken or it's changed or altered or broken in some way then other muscles are forced to pick up the slack namely the bottom or the low back erectors. So the erector spinae are muscles that run basically from the tailbone all the way up to the base of the skull. They're, they're not like, they're not bad. That's the thing. Like, oh, is it bad to feel my erectors? Is it bad that my erect? No, it's not bad. It's just a muscle. Like it's, it, it's, it's supposed to work in conjunction with other things. When we have these muscles that aren't meant to do certain jobs, fulfill that job, that's when there's dysfunction. The lumbar erectors are not meant to manage hip flexion because that ain't hip flexion. That's, lum that's hyper mobility of the lumbar erectors and of the lumbar spine. And when that happens, it basically tells the hip, eh, sorry, can't use you. You can't be dominant in the lumbar spine and the hips at the same time. You just can't. It's impossible. Because if you're, if you're dominant in the lumbar spine and you're flexing like this, that means your rib cage and pelvis have, have displaced which means that your, your hips are basically going to be either stretched to death or shortened to death. Like there, there's no middle ground. There's no holdability where these guys understand their role. The, the glute needs understand their role. The hamstrings are free and can open and close as needed. Certain muscles start to learn how to hold and like really never move. Most people's hamstrings don't move. Most people's glute maxes don't really move. Most people's rib cages don't move. Like, some of the biggest musculature on the body just don't move. And I don't mean literally like it's not moving at all. I mean that it's like holding on for dear life and the stretchability of it is like minuscule. 
very minuscule. I remember watching a video, I think it was on TikTok or, or somewhere, but you were showing where the hamstring attaches. And for me, that was a huge aha moment because everyone, again, is trying to just to, to stretch the hamstring, but they don't realize that the hamstring, because muscles move bones, is changing the orientation of the pelvis. And yeah. now things literally can't do their job exactly. because of how things are set up habitually. Exactly. That, that, that's exactly right, man. That's why the hamstrings are so important and the posterior leg is so important. Because um, if the hamstrings are holding, as you said, it changes the orientation of the pelvis. Where if my hamstrings are stuck, when I sit down, my pelvis will dump because it's getting pulled by the tightness of the posterior leg. When I bend forward, my posterior leg, it ain't moving no more. So my rib cage, it dumps. So it's like, no matter what, in whatever direction that you're going, whether it be hip flexion where you're bending over, or hip extension where you're standing up, because there's no stability at the middle, they're just flopping all over the place. Like it's yeah. a noodle. The middle, the middle becomes a noodle. Um, you could think of the, the spine as like a bamboo stick. So like the idea that we can like move one part of the spine and the other parts aren't affected is like, it's impossible. If you grab the middle of the spine and pull it like that, you pull the middle this way, where you think the ends are gonna go? That way. So when you smash the low back into the ground, <laughs> the spine's gonna respond. When you hyperextend, the spine's gonna respond. It's, it's a bamboo stick. Mm. So in order to get this to stop, we have to freeze it and then we have to switch it so that the ends are moving. You could think of it as like a whip where the base needs to be here so that the end can be like that. Like we were not meant to, to whip with our low back. Like it's not, it's not meant to be like that's that. That's actually super interesting because that's this, this concept for any athletes, either like current or, or someone who just loves doing athletic things like golfing. I wish I would have known this concept because looking back, there's so much power that I leaked as a baseball player and it was developed. I think partially, I remember getting stress fractures in my low back from basketball, just being under the hoop rebounding and not having that stability. And so when you lack that whip from the core, now the arm, now whatever, um, you know, whether that's the club face, the bat, whatever it is that you're trying to go and, and deliver force on, it's leaking out of the core. And, and I had this conversation with Dana Santis where we were just talking about breathing and like a lot of pitchers will get um, oblique strains and it's because the rib cage and the pelvic alignment isn't there. Something's constantly at length. And then she was using an example of like Wim Hof where it's like, are there elements about that that are great? Sure. But if you go and all of a sudden ex do an exorcism of Emily Rose to your chest, well, yeah, you're going to have a huge strain on those muscles. And then anytime you go to exert force and you need that core to turn and whip, everything is, is disconnected. So you lose so much power from that. And like, that's a concept that I'm like, man, I wish I would have had that. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Exactly. Um, in order to produce force from the ground, it needs to transfer. It needs to move. But if, as you said, if there's leaking where there's hyper extension or hyperflexion somewhere, now the acute angle is different. So it, th that is literally going to be where the highest torque slash work is going to be applied. It's the same thing as if your knees hyperextend. Now your hip doesn't have to extend because your knee is finishing the motion. Your knee is finishing it. So um, it all comes down to, as you said, stability for that whip. Because when I try to whip, if my middle breaks, now that's where the whip is. But if that holds strong, then I can actually transfer force from my rib cage, from my hips into my arm for a pitch or for a swing. Because the or punch. Yeah. Or a punch. Yeah, big time. And it's and you know, it's not that the middle is meant to be like stuck and frozen. It is meant to move, but it's not meant to be the primary mover in these motions. Your lumbar erectors are not meant to be primary movers in hip flexion. They're meant to be stable. And even in a an anterior tilt or posterior tilt, which is all over Instagram, whereas, oh my gosh, if you have APT, you do PPT. Well, they're kind of manifestations of the same problem, instability. Mm -hmm. Posterior pelvic tilt is just hip extension and anterior pelvic tilt is just hip flexion. So anterior pelvic tilt is just bending forward. You're just 
there's just different things managing it. Posterior pelvic tilt is going like this, squeezing your butt forward or leaning backwards, but there's different things managing it. That's why I say lengthen the ends and the middle stays frozen. Like the, that middle part, that extension curve in the low back is meant to be the same while we move these ends. So if you think of the middle of the back being here, the ends are supposed to move while this part stays still. Yeah. And I'll, I'll give just my own experience because you and I worked together after I got hit by a trolley. I think it was 2019. Yeah, I got was crazy. I got rear-ended by a car. Uh, my car got rear-ended by the trolley. Um, I, my car got totaled. And like a week later, I was sitting on a stability ball. This is funny that it's now a, a stability ball, but I was sitting on a stability ball and something happened in my low back to where my brain was just like, we have no stability here. And it locked me up for 45 minutes. I was working with a client and I was stuck in the quadruped in all fours. And this poor lady had to call my doctor. She had to call my girlfriend. She had to like help me up off the floor because I had such instability because every like getting hit by the trolley uh, history of concussions had just basically like locked up different parts of my body and there's still definitely things to work on, but just to, to give you guys a little bit of context. Um, so w was bedridden for a few days and I'd always dealt with like this low back pain that would like shoot and it would just come out of nowhere because there wouldn't be, um, uh, any kind of stability. There would be a lot of, I would say like compression and just like natural extension in that area. And for a while, I was like, wow, am I ever going to lift again? Because it, anything I did was super painful and just kind of radiated up into my mid back, up into my neck. I couldn't do a down dog without, without pain. And like, there's all these things that like I used to be able to do. And Karan, you and I just worked on breathing, rib cage, pelvic alignment. And there were some other things we worked on with, with the hinge that I remember, but like, the year, what would it be? Yeah. The year after ran a sub three marathon, I now can like, I, I walked up to a 400 pound deadlift and just like pulled it up and like no belt, no pain at all. And I, people look at me like I'm crazy when I'm like, Oh, it's your breathing, it's your rib cage and your pelvis. Like it's a really simple concept. And every single movement that you do happens. Like I'll, I'll play video games. Now I was, I was laughing at myself a few months back. I was playing video games. And like, I felt like a, like a, a rabbit or like a meerkat sitting because I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to sit in my video game, but, but like, I'm sitting <laughs> on the edge of the couch doing that. And it all clicked to me when you were saying, you know, length into the spine two weekends ago, uh, probably like a month ago. Anyway, I was with some friends that I hadn't seen in like a year and they're like, Whoa, you look like you've gotten taller. And I'm like, I probably have <laughs> like now I'm six one. And these are all things that you know, I didn't even get, I would say I've got like 10% of the stuff that you guys do, but even just that 10%. And then what I know, and just going and applying it was able to help me get such a, a market improvement on like my quality of life. Yeah, and like, there's little things that come up, but I know how to get out of that pain. And I, I, know, I have the map out of that maze now. And yeah. that's why I, I wanted to have you on. That's why uh, I follow everything that you talk about. Cause every time I'm like, Oh, like what, what do I need to do with my shoulders? I feel like now, like I've got this big, massive back. And a lot of it is to what you've talked about. It's, it's not posture. I'm, I'm not using the right word with that, but it's just like a complete remapping. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's, it, that's, that's super powerful, bro. Because that's, that's like the narrative that we're, we're trying to put out, you know, like my goal is to restore homeostasis via you know, efficient alignment, posture, changing my nervous system to look like Jordan, to look like Eric, like that's, that's what I want. But that does not have to be everybody's goal at all. Like you said, man, you took 10% and you ran with it and you, your life is so much better. Like that's what really matters. Like the person's life improving and you don't need to give up everything you're doing to improve your quality of life. It's just a variable. It's just an insertion, something that you haven't thought of or done, in, insert it into your life and see what freaking happens. The rib cage and pelvic stability that we teach, the in, influence on the nervous system is very powerful. And just a, a water drop is like it trickles and it, it impacts every, every function, every major system in the body. 
if you if you if you put out a map of the nervous system and then the circulatory system and then the lymphatic system they all follow similar slash same lines so if one of those systems is, is disrupted via compression probably the other ones are getting impacted as well especially since the nerves are sort of sending communication channels via the brain like we help you open that literally you know what i mean so it's like a it's tough because you know the number one question is like oh do i stop lifting do i have to stop doing this do i have to stop doing that is that going to affect my results my blah 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 blah. how long is it going to take you know like one what do results mean for you they're not the same for me my results are different than yours like you you came to me because you know you hurt your back deadlifting or you hurt your back doing this or you know you have pain and you want to change that great let's go that's that's your result like feeling better try it and see what happens you know so it's like there are these these expectations that people have to just like stop doing everything that you're doing and just give it all up and i'm like you know i've never advocated for to stop doing everything you're doing I said, hey, just just take it slow. When you feel good, go give it a shot. That's all. That's all. Yeah. No, absolutely. And like that's that's what I've done is like you see what you and, and the different coaches are able to do and what you're doing every day. And for anyone that it goes and looks at it or has seen it in the in the past, like you don't have to go that route. The same way as I'm sure people look at my page and they're like, oh, do I have to like track my macros or like sleep yeah. sleeve? And it's like, no. But the like the, the things you're talking about are so foundational and like so i guess like i'm looking at a road right now and it's like we're not even talking about the road we're talking about like underneath it but if what that road is built on is not solid stuff's gonna pull, pop up out of it and then you're gonna have little cracks and what one other point i want to hammer home and you talked about is, is just how many systems are overlapping with each other and how you know you're like if there's compression in one area there's compression in another area if your rib cage and pelvis aren't aligned and your breathing is trash, that's going to affect your likelihood to stay in a really chronically stressed out state. And that's what I'm literally able to notice the day of. If I'm super stressed and I feel like my chest is getting locked up, then I can feel my low back getting tight. Then I can feel you know, things getting out of, of alignment, but it's like that is literally impacting your anxiety the likelihood of you to get into a panicked or a highly anxious state. And it's all stemming from how you breathe, which is all stemming from the current default map that you have of your, your body. Structure, man. That's right. That's right. Um, there's a, uh, it's, it's hard to like talk about some of these things only because there's many narratives on Instagram and I don't, I don't want to like start wars or like, you know, I'm not, a, I'm not one to do that. I just, I just do my thing and I help people, you know, if you want to listen, you want to come through, let's go. But I, I never, I make it a point to not talk trash ever. Cause it's, it's just, it's just not a good look ever. Um, however, there's a big sort of idea that breathing alone is the ticket. Now, yes, we can influence the nervous system. We can get people relaxed, but in order to have lasting changes, we need to attack the structure. The, the structure is what is so important in order to actually improve the capability, the ability of the intrinsic core to intake and expel gas and create intra-abdominal pressure is contingent upon the rib cage and pelvis being in alignment and the lumbar spine being in a natural extension curve. Because once that changes, now we're changing what muscles are managing breathing, what muscles are managing, standing, sitting, all of that. So we have to look at the structure and the positions of the bones, the shapes that the body is making in order to understand what needs to be done. So like visually, I can see so much more, man. It's nuts. I can look at someone and know exactly what they need. I can, I can see it. Like I can like draw, I, I, I know, I just know I, it takes two seconds because there's, there's certain things that I'm learning from Jordan, watching Eric's page and just like, just constantly just, just intaking info, man. I, and I could just like spot it. And I was just like, okay, I, I know exactly what I do with you. I know exactly how to help them. Exactly. You know what I mean? So like, it's, it's like a, it's like, it seems like almost like a curse. Like I went to Disneyland Friday and I'm like, 
and I know all these things uh, you're looking at the same way or it's like make you can make this change this change this change and it's like you have to just be like that you can't go to them they got to come to you right yeah and you, man you can look at you can go to a jazz game and just be like man there's another guy there's another guy right there look at yeah. some- I, I really wish like I was saying it in my stories um this morning I was like man I wish I could just like teleport how I feel to somebody like if I just like tap them on the shoulder, they just like have an just, X. Then be like an X Men power. Yeah, dude. Like I wish I could do that, just so people could understand that I like this isn't like a this isn't like I'm saying it because I I want to or because you know it, it, it's it's cool. Like I have to. I have I have no choice but to talk about this stuff. Like I feel way too good. My clients feel way too good. Our community feels way too freaking good for me to just be like, oh yeah, do whatever you want. Like, like, have you considered this? Have you looked at this? I ain't gonna tell you what to do, but hey, like, you should probably look at this. Like, you should probably check it out. <laughs> so for me, it's just like I have that. There is a, there is a moral, a, a moral imperative, for me, to tell people about this. Whether they get the program, whether they do the free trial, whether they do whatever, just like try something, do something, man. Like, golly, it's 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 your center. Like, it's it's your middle. It's everything. It's the foundation of everything that you want to do. The, the center fire that everyone is dealing with is the rib cage and pelvic alignment. Whether it be your shoulders, your hips, your knees, your ankles, your neck, it all stems from instability in the middle. Your shoulders aren't immobile because you need shoulder mobility. Your shoulders are immobile because your ribs are flat and your scapula are destabilized because your serratus is weak. That's all it is. In order to improve that, we first line you up and then we get the serratus strong and then we teach you how to keep it open and breathe back there. That's, that's, and and to me, it's like, it's like night and day, bro. I do it every day. I train people every day. I think about it every single day, all day. But like, I can't just be like, you know what I mean? Like, it's, 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 it's hard, man. Like I, I wish, I wish, you know, one day people are going to look at it kind of the way you do. We're like, this was great. I'm going to use it in my life. It makes me feel better. That's, that's awesome. I'm going to just keep doing this. I, I have that map. I have that, that system, that strategy to manage my pain, to manage my discomforts. Where it's not going to be like, oh, I got to go all out. I got to give up everything I do. Jeez, man. Like, I, I really enjoy this activity. I really enjoy that activity. I don't want to give that up. You don't have to. You don't have to. So. I'm rambling at this point. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we, we can wrap it up right here. If someone wanted to like, just get an understanding of like what you do and maybe not even understand, just start working with you. Is it going to flowability? Is it just starting a conversation with you? Cause I, I I'll, I'd say at least from my perspective, initially looking at it, it's like, you know, it'll help, but you're like, I don't understand how this helps. So like maybe for, tell people like, you don't need to understand, just know it works. And I'm telling you it works. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, that's a great point, man. Um, I would say the best way to start, you can obviously DM me. Um, my Instagram is at Karan X Flow, K A R O N X F L O. Um, or um, in order to work with me personally, uh, it's a basically you have to buy it through the program. So once you get on the program, then you can get personal training. Um, just because the the programming is so important, like that that's the bread and butter. Like that's what really creates the lasting changes and, and helps the most self-study is the most important thing. And I don't mean you got to do seven days a week, minimum effective dose three to four days a week for 45 minutes to an hour. You can do that. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah. So if you're doing personal training with someone, that's a, that's something that someone's getting after they join the, the base program. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and you can get the program at www.flowability.com. Cool. Cool. Uh, anything you guys are working on in the future, like events or anything coming up you guys are pumped about? Yeah, man. Um, we're working on a ton um, in the app, but also externally. Um, I can talk about kind of some things we got going on in the app. Speaking of lifting, we're working on a hybrid program where we're basically teaching people how to lift with some of these principles in mind, some of the things that you and I worked on, um, some of the things that we're applying to external load. We're going to basically create a program around it um, just to help people who want to weight lift, but, you know, want to be conscious of their spine, um, help give them some type of starting ground 
with the program inside of it, of course. Um, we're working on a new format where it's like a 30 minute like hit style where it's like you have you do a certain exercise for my time, next exercise, next exercise, kind of like a you know online uh, video style like like back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on for people on our program hosting like retreats and you know, out here in Utah in the outdoors, um, just because we know the power of in person work, man. It's it's night and day. If we yeah. ever get to if we ever get to work in person, like you, you'll you'll understand once we get busy, it's like whoa. <laughs> Like when I first got trained in person from Jordan, I was like, whoa, like this is like, holy crap. So um, we're working on trying to get more in-person stuff too. Yeah, I'd love to be in the room with, then you get 40 people all blowing at the same time. You guys are able to <laughs> power a small city with the wind turbines. <laughs> Literally just freaking giant factory of <laughs> wind powered. I'll, I'll, get, I'll get looks at the gym when I'm just like blowing out my mouth, doing anything and people are just like why are you stop blowing and i'm like <laughs> what are you exhale. doing man <laughs> exhale number Come one in. thing bro well dude what, thanks what, you. Are you, what are you doing bro what are you doing <laughs> yeah exactly um well dude thanks for coming on and just sharing like this really cool system that you do and really helpful uh i know like i said it, it helped me and it's something that i try and articulate to clients and i'm just like you know what I want to just have Karan come on, talk about it. And then when they're like, what, what, what are we doing? I'll be like, listen to this podcast and then go work with him. Um, because it's just like, there's my, there's my lane, there's your lane. And you'll be, you'll be in a much faster car if you get in his lane. Appreciate for you for this man. stuff. Absolutely. Um, take care and uh, look forward to catching up soon. Yes, sir. Adios. Adios.